Hello, my soccer universe. Sometimes you get a jersey and it is so worth it. Talking, of course, about this Georgia jersey where I considered other options, but in the end I went for the red one and boy, is this worth it. But hey, this video is not about my collection. There are plenty of other videos out there. This video is, of course, about the Euros in general and in particular, and that will be the focus today of Georgia advancing. Of course, we look all the other games as well. We had a wild one in Hamburg between the Turks and the Czechs. We had a group that finished all level, four points, all four teams on four points. And so it is Ukraine who are going out based on goal difference. And the weird scenes that the team that advanced was booed off by the fans, whereas the other one that was eliminated got applauded. And fortunately enough, we only got a deluge in Frankfurt, but we did not get a, what the Italians call biscotto, a collusion where the, both teams agree to the advantageous draw which in the end happened but it was actually quite an open and entertaining game which is something i cannot really say overall for this latter part of the group stage i think the euro started out really really well and it was high quality there were many goals scored but as soon as matched it to it the goal scoring took a real nose dive and yes group c is very much responsible for most of that but it was a general trend and i think it's mostly tactical considerations because suddenly it was something to play for maybe that the heat came out played with it also you know in frankfurt we hear that the pitch was not that well but it's something that was noticeable because we were at a roughly three goals per game after the first eight games and then now we are down to 2.25 which is really 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 low we got also a few nil nil draws i hope that the knockout stage will pick the slack up a little bit in terms of goal scoring and also in terms of quality of the games because let's face it as much as i enjoy the euros there were some real stinkers in there and that's not something i really like to say because i always consider the euros probably the slightly better competition in the world cup on the other side, one big drawback of the Euros, I think, is the tiebreaker that it's head to head first ahead of goal difference. That made now the last games of the group stage not as exciting as we had at the last World Cup. Also, that three teams advance, it's also usually not that exciting. Although, I remember at the last Euros, the last day of the group stage was actually quite good. And lastly, and we will talk about that as well, we have now a very curious, slightly uneven bracket with all the results because, you know, if there are few favorites that don't live up to their expectations, the bracket can get uneven. And we have it uneven, but, you know, it's not all that bad in the end, but still, the teams you would say are the favorites, they are all in one half of the bracket. But before we dive into the action yesterday, we have to, of course, talk jersey matchup. Bingo! I got everything right again, except for one. For an unexplicable reason, Belgium decided to play in their away jersey. Yes, I have it back there and I'm as happy it was on show. But it didn't make much sense because just against Romania, Belgium played in red against an all yellow Romania. And now against an all yellow Ukraine, Belgium played in their away kit. I suppose they were the away team. They had the choice between the two and, you know, then for marketing reasons, they decided, uh, let's go, we are an away team, let's go for the away kit. That's what I would think. Uh, another curiosity was that Portugal, and it kind of made sense, played in light blue shorts, which kind of fit with the kit, but the kit is so heavily patterned that the shorts kind of looked a little bit off on that one. Other than that, all fine. I was a teeny bit surprised when I saw it, but I guess I would have guessed it that the Czechs played in blue pants instead of the typically white ones, but you know, with Turkey all white, I think it's also made sense. Let's jump into Group E. And the big fear ahead of the meeting in Frankfurt between Slovakia and Romania was that this is going to end up in a draw and a very drab draw. It was anything but, yes, it ended in a draw, but it was actually quite an open up and down game. It was entertaining. This was one of the more entertaining games. And though I wanted to watch Belgium against Ukraine, I was actually happy that most of the TV stations that I wanted to watch showed that one. So really pleased with that one because the other one, as we'll talk about shortly, was maybe a lot of tension at the end, but it was not a great game. But this one actually was entertaining. It was also oppressive heat at the beginning that then in the second half unloaded itself in a real thunderstorm, rain coming down. It was wild scenes. Whenever your TV picture has this kind of whitish tint over it, it means really heavy rain. But 
we have to go back to the first half. As I said, both teams went for it. It was that the Slovakia was the more structured team, probably very well organized. And I would even argue that Slovakia potentially was the best team in this group. It's just that it didn't quite work out for them. Whereas Romania, they have so many skillful players, but it's a little bit more wilder in, in, in a way. They can improvise a little bit here and there. So that was very intriguing. Slovakia took the lead after. I think each team traded chances. I would say that probably Romania had a slightly better one at first, but you know, Kuczka puts a cross in finds the head of Duda and it's 1-0 for Slovakia, a little bit surprisingly. And then Romania needed to come and Haji runs in the box, he's taken down. There was a touch outside of the box first, but the real one that took him down was right on the line. It is a penalty that Marin converts rather emphatically and then it ends 1-1. And then again for the second half, I would say that Slovakia had more of the game. However, Romania were always threatening. I said it was an entertaining affair. There was not really a goal scoring chance that stood out more than any other, but in the end it ends in the 1-1 one -one draw, a draw that suited both teams. It also means that Romania actually they ended up then winning the group paired with the other result. Slovakia though, they were kind of not sure what is happening and everyone knew a draw is enough for both of them. Ukraine against uh, Belgium was a really drab affair. Belgium did not show up. I mean, yes, there was an early chance by Lukaku. There was a free kick on the outside of the net by De Bruyne. But for a team that, yes, they knew that the draw is enough, but you wanted to win the group, I'm sure. Because if you win that group, I think you like the way you're going. Although probably in, you didn't know it at the time, but now you would have had a meeting with your Dutch neighbors, which would also have been real fun. But I don't know what Belgium were really thinking in that game or whether they could, whether they should. I also don't fully understand. Ukraine desperately needed the win. And yes, this Belgium side can be scary. But I would have probably gone all out a little bit sooner. And yes, Ukraine also pulled out an interesting lineup with no Sinjenko, with no Mudrik, for instance. You know, big name stars. In any case, when it came push to shove, Ukraine were actually pushing and had the Belgians right there. I mean, there was a last ditch effort by Wout Fass that saved a goal. Then there was a corner kick that Malinowski tried to put into goal that Castells saved right on the line. And then very late, late on, I think it was a Stepanenko that had a really good shot, was free in the box, cannot get the shot off quite and hits Castells right on. It ends nil nil. And sadly, Ukraine are out, Belgium are on. However, the fans did not like it. You could see <laughs> Belgium wanted to go, go to fans. They saw the insult hurled at them and the press said, okay, let's get out of here. And then at the same time in Frankfurt, Slovakia also quickly celebrated and it was delayed. And now on to Group F. Group F, it was pretty clear. If the Czechs win, they're in. They definitely need that. For Turkey, a draw is enough. And then the Hungarians were also hoping that neither Georgia nor the Czechs are winning so that they have a chance of advancing or they would have advanced this way. So there was this triple race there. And let's start with the big one, Georgia against Portugal. Although this was not the match I was focusing on because I thought that the Czech Republic against Turkey this is more or less a shootout and it proved to be. However, there the early goal was scored, Portugal making eight lineup changes. Playing Cristiano Ronaldo for some weird reason, you know. I guess he thought we're playing against Georgia. I can get a couple of goals in there. In any case, early on, Silva loses the ball in midfield. Mikodatze runs into the opposition half. And Kvaraskele is also on a free run, gets the ball, puts it really emphatically into the net. And that sets up the game already for a sensation. However, Portugal had plenty of chances in that, that one. Most notably, of course, was a Cristiano Ronaldo free kick. And while I have been mocking his free kick taking abilities, this one was actually not that bad. And Mama Dash really, really had to work hard to keep, to keep the head without he could not save, save it. But you know, he was right there and there was no rebound happening. But Portugal controlled possession, had plenty of shots. If you just look at the stats, 14 shots, five on goal, 21 attempts. Portugal were really trying to get this equalizer. And it's continued this way in, into the second half and right at the point when you really thought the game is even and on a tipping point that Portugal might get the breakthrough. Again, it is uh, Silva who brings down Lohoshvili, who 
played in Austria actually for a while. Hero of Favoriten because he saved a player's life by pulling out the tongue. I just want to mention that. And it's a clear penalty that was not initially given, but VAR gives it and Mikodatze steps up. He is now the leading goal scorer at the Euros with three goals, two from a penalty. And probably one of the outstanding players of Georgia converts it and that settles the game. With that win, Georgia are through. That's quite amazing, I gotta say. No one expected that. Even with the second string Portugal team, because everyone thought that Portugal is so deep, they can beat anyone on, on the day and, you know, like with Spain, maybe there are some players that want to recommend themselves for the first team squad, especially since Roberto Martinez does not really quite seem to know who is in his best squad. Alas, it doesn't seem this way at the moment. And I think that the coach is a little bit confused about what he has on show. But I want to focus here on Georgia. This was by purely a FIFA ranking the biggest upset we ever had at Euros history. Yes, it was aided for B string team. But this Georgia team has been a real enrichment to these Euros. All of their games have been exciting. And I'm so happy to see them advance. They have probably Mamadash really the keeper of the tournament. Yes, they are open. Yes, they're not as talented. But they really worked it hard and played quite well. And I think they deserved moving on. When talking about Georgia, we also have to mention that they are a win for the Nations League because they qualified not through the qualifying group. In fact, they've never finished higher than fourth in a qualifying group, but they went through the Nations League playoff. And yes, they have some really exciting players, some really great talent, Kvaraschelia being the most prominent of those. But if it wasn't for the Nations League, Georgia would not be at this tournament. So UEFA will take this down as a big victory for them as well. Yes, Turkey move on and Turkey are also exciting. So I don't want to take too much away from them. However, the game against the Czech Republic, man, first off, Istvan Kovac, I really hate talking about the referee, but the way he was dishing out yellow cards, it, it was a fighting game. There's no doubt about that. But did it really call for a total of 18 yellow and two red cards? That was a little bit too much. And, you know, with the first yellow cards, he sent off Antonin Barak. And individually, I think each of the yellow cards are all right. But I still wish that maybe he would have not turned the game, especially when later on Yildiz puts a real elbow to the head of a Czech player that the referee seemingly didn't see, which would have been another yellow red. And then everything would be level again. At first, the game was kind of open and you saw that both teams knew what's at stake. The Czechs coming out. The Czechs are actually quite a solid team, not an exciting team, but a relatively solid team. But then the game descended in complete chaos and was very arrhythmic and, and so on. It was more about the physicality than anything else. In the second half, even with a man less, the Czechs kept the game quite open. However, Turkey, who knew that they only needed a draw, were always threatening. You also could see that the goalkeeper Staniak had actually dislocated his shoulder on a save earlier. And then, yeah, the first goal in the game came through a beautiful shot by Chalanoglu. I mean, absolutely amazing technique there. This hit so sweetly and then, yeah, Staniak had to come off afterwards. However, the Czechs, as I said, were really in the game with a man less. They brought on Khori, Kuchta, Kovars. It was all there. Especially Khori, who is a huge presence, gets the ball ahead of the Turkish goalkeeper, uh, takes a shot, it is blocked off the line, but Suchik then converts the rebound. And at that point, I really thought that Turkey is there for the taking, even with a man less. And the Czechs actually did a little bit more. Turkey had counterattacks, but played them so poorly most of the time. And then another call went against the Czechs when I don't remember the player now, but a Czech goal was scored. But the referee gave a foul just in the build up of that. And if you see the replays, I don't think there was a foul. He whistled it dead, and I think the Czechs would have deserved that goal at this point because they were actually really the better team pushing for more. In any case, it is very late on that Turkey then get the winner with Cenk Tosun scoring it on one of those rare counter attacks. But at that point, the game really had descended into madness. It also has quite some impact because you know Jalanogli got a yellow card. He's missing the next game, which I think is for the opponent that we will reveal rather quickly. <laughs> Austria is not so bad, I would say. But Turkey and 
Georgia move on. Turkey actually level on points with Portugal. Of course, Portugal beat them rather convincingly. And so we have a bracket. And let's look at it just in its pure form, where we just look at the matchup. Spain against Georgia, Germany, Denmark. Yeah, those, this is one quadrant. Spain and Germany are favored, although Denmark could give Germany probably a little bit of a fight. Portugal, Slovenia also a really one-sided game one would expect although this is a very sl uh, solid Slovenia side France against Belgium <laughs> Belgium could have played the Netherlands FC or France a neighbor in either case interesting stuff tough draw for France as well that I think is probably the standout matchup of that round then we have Romania Netherlands Austria Turkey wide open and weirdly enough you see Austria Netherlands are on a collision course for a quarterfinal they just played in the last group game there's something wrong with this bracket I think it should be that the Netherlands and Georgia should change. That would make it a little bit more even, although it would make the upper quarter way more heavy. And then the lower quarter, England, Slovakia and Switzerland, Italy. Switzerland could give Italy a little bit of a scare. I wouldn't be surprised if Switzerland win that one. And Slovakia is a solid team, so expect another boar fest. Let's look at the projections. Of course, Spain, Germany move on, would move in a crucial quarterfinal. I think this has some vibes like the Argentina Germany one in 2006 if you were to ask me. This is the one. If Germany win that one I think Germany will go on to win the tournament. Portugal and France would meet in the quarterfinals. I think that's realistic uh, and then France would move on against Spain. I don't think that they would be favored against Spain the way Spain have been playing but of course they are the higher rated team so they would move on to the final. In the lower quarter as I said collision course for Netherlands Austria to play again in Berlin. Just a few days after they've met before, uh, same group opponents meeting in the quarterfinals should not be possible. It is at the moment. I like Austria's chances in that one, although I have a kind of a suspicion that it might be tough against Turkey. Although we beat them 6-1 in the friendly. So, you know, now you're suddenly the favorites and that doesn't play well. From the underdog story was the big one so far. So, you know, just saying. England expected to move on and Italy also so they would meet in a replay of the Euro final and then we would have England against the Netherlands two flawed teams England moving into the final so we would have at least one surprise semi-finalist because no one would have expected the Dutch to go in there and we'll start with a round of 16 on Saturday Switzerland against Italy in Berlin and then Germany against Denmark I think that's quite interesting and then around the, week, the weekend England, Slovakia and Spain against Georgia. All the other ones will be then played Monday and Tuesday. Group stage is in the books. Let me know what you thought about the final results of the group and how do you like the bracket. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!